Welcome to Proper Worldwide, where we give you the proper tools to do what you do best. My name is Roxanne Roncal. I am a creative entrepreneur and digital media marketer. I help artists and small businesses build their brand on a strategic level and then tell their stories online. I'm Mike Leisure. I'm an art director and I'm an artist. And in the past, I've worked with men's contemporary fashion. I've worked in streetwear and even skate brands. And we worked with a lot of different e-coms from a startup to well-established brands. So we wanted to figure out how to help people. And I know you landed on this video because you want to shoot your e-commerce photography. You want to get it done now. Uh, but before you shoot, put your camera down. And we have a couple points that we want to go over that is going to help you to not do the work twice. I can tell you from experience, we've done this before. We have shot an entire line of clothes and then realized that didn't work because we didn't think about a couple of things beforehand. So to avoid all those, get you on the fastest track to getting your product sold. But if you really want to shoot and you don't want to learn anything about this and potentially do more work, there's also some quick tips and tricks later on in the video. I'll have the timestamp there for you to skip forward to that part, but I highly recommend watching this part. It's up to you. Are you still watching? Good. Anyway, down there. And let's get back into it. When it comes to e com photography, it's always very tedious and repetitive work, but it must be done. So how do we do it well? The first thing you want to do is create consistency in your online shop. For professional looking sites, consistency is one of the most important things. Like if I land on your page and I see a, a top and then I see something else and then the background colors are like the color temperature is off or something, it's going to look a little amateur to me. And so the first thing is consistency of your background. Is it a pure white? Is it an off white? How closely can you get them to all resemble? Uh, and you can do that by clipping. Um, you can do that by shooting on a specific background and always having the same settings. But how you do that is up to you. All right, so when I was recording this, I think I went too quickly. And I want to show you the difference between uh, clipping and then having a background. Here is a background, right? So it retains all the shadows and the lighting that was shot in it originally. And if we switch over here to the clip version, you'll see that the background is now gone. It's on pure white, so no shadows. And that's what that looks like. I'd also like to take this time to note that if you do clip something, you can actually add in your own shadow when you come back in. And that can look pretty bad if you don't do it correctly, but it looks as good as you want it to look if you put in the time for it. Next is the size of your photo. Do we want the dimension to be square, vertical? You're gonna have to establish that. And I think too, a lot of times you can take cues from wherever your actual site is. Some of them allow you to have your own sizes and some of them have preset sizes. Uh, whether you're on Squarespace, Big Cartel, Shopify, whatever the case may be, take a look at that before you decide on whatever you're doing because that can also change how you work. Next is the size of your product. It sounds dumb, but really take a look at how large your span is. If you're selling just candles, fine. But also even within candles, maybe you have a, a tea candle or maybe you have a large wax candle. Um, the height of these things is going to change how you shoot them and how they fit on your store. After you've figured out the height and width of all your products and how much they vary, you should create a template that tells you the maximum width or height of each product and that is going to allow you to create the consistency that you're looking for. Another thing I forgot to mention is utilizing a zoom feature within your e-com store and depending on the website that you're at, it has different um, capabilities or requirements. Shopify, for instance, requires you to have at least an 800 by 800 for the zoom feature to be enabled. And then you're going to think about quality and things like that as you're, you're working on this. Lastly, as far as things to consider and creating consistency in your online shop is the file size. Now, file size is really important because one, it will determine how fast your site loads. And we all know we're impatient millennials or... Um, People in general, really. True. And uh, if something takes longer than a minute or even 30 seconds to load, you will likely lose a customer. I think even faster than that, I think we've gotten so impatient because sometimes when you're like, you wait for three seconds, and you're like, I've been waiting for 30 seconds for this to load, but it was really only three seconds. Yeah. So 
Uh, things to consider, the smaller the file size, the faster it loads, you know this, but also the lower your file size, the lower quality your uh, photo is gonna be. So you're gonna have to find that sweet spot. You're gonna have to do some testing. You're gonna have to look at best practices and also where you're at. Sometimes uh, the base in which your store is at will also tell you the best sizes. Next, we're gonna cover some tips and tricks if you are shooting on a budget. Tip number one, if you're shooting clothes, you can shoot them hanging. Uh, if you don't have a studio to shoot your flats in or whatever, you can take them and then put them on a hanger. Find something cool, a wooden one, a metal one, not the one that's uh, in your closet that's plastic, potentially not even the wood one that is nicer because you're gonna want something really, really nice for the camera. Uh, but even those ones can do if you know what you're doing and if it fits the clothes correctly. All right, so this should go without saying, but I'm gonna say anyway, make sure you lint roll all your clothes, make sure there's steam so you don't have to deal with that in post. Today we're working with my homies brand, Uptown Rebel. Uh, they're based out of Las Vegas. This is a mass hallucination shirt. I really like this thing, but we're gonna go ahead and shoot that, just kind of test it out and see how it looks. Um, as you'll notice, we were talking about hangers. I only have a wood hanger, but I have like two different kinds, so we'll test how that looks. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and steam everything and lint roll it. Obviously, if you have an industrial grade steamer, it works very nice, very fast. Uh, but I got this one off Amazon. It's like a pure steam. Uh, it's a nice little travel one, but it works. Gets things done. You don't need super high professional stuff to get this done. But obviously, the better your equipment, the easier things are. Next, I'm gonna take this into the studio. We're gonna get that done. Let's go take these photos. All right, so like I said, we've got uh, two different types of hangers, right? This one I'm kind of annoyed with because it has this bar here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap out for this other hanger. And this one doesn't have the bar, so I'm thinking it'll look better, but we'll go ahead and see. Oh, and then make sure you don't stretch out the neck like I am right now. So personally, I like this one better. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and go with this one. Let's take it to the studio. Okay, so now we're not in a studio, but we're in a spot, I have a white wall. I just set it up with a pen, I'm hanging it, right? Now what's important is that you style it correctly and you want everything to drape as nice as possible. I kind of like to have the body of the shirt a little more in or out in front of the arms and then I'm gonna flatten out the arms here. So there are gonna be some natural things that are occurring. You might wanna pull down a little bit just to have it look right. And then there's gonna be like these natural things occurring, but sometimes that looks cool. You just have to figure out what works for you. So what we have here is the photo that I took on the wall earlier. So you see, I've already edited a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this into Photoshop, right? Now, as soon as I get it into here, I'm gonna size it up and then I want everything to match up to these lines. So these are things that you learn as you go and uh, you'll notice that there's lines and you want it to fill out the whole thing. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can stretch it, you can blend it. Blend would look something like this where you use the mixer brush and just get that all in there. And again, this isn't gonna get you the super crazy consistency, but if you're shooting in the same place with the same white balance and then you're using the same filters as you go in, then you should be good. Okay, so this is one way of doing it right. The other way, the cheat way of doing this is rasterizing it. And then you can actually just whoop, and stretch it out. This is gonna stretch your pixels. You do only have a certain amount before it starts looking bad. So be very careful when you do this. That's kind of another quick way to do it. And uh, you can see the differences here. But it does change as you can tell in these areas. Next thing you can do is shoot your products in an environment uh, that could be in a garden, it could be against a concrete wall, it could be against a wooden wall, whatever the case may be. You can choose something that fits your product aesthetic and then shoot there. And then what that's gonna do is give you a little bit more wiggle room in consistency. Uh, still, you're gonna want your exposure to be about the same, your contrast and the size of your product, but now you can play with it so that your whites aren't always the same, but that's up to you. 
I have a friend of mine, his name is John, and he runs a company called Humble Chains, and he also sells rings, but that's gonna come soon. But just as a test, I wanted to use this to show you how you can shoot a bunch of different places and then utilize that inside your e-com store and still make it look good. So just as a test, we'll throw in a couple right now so you see what that looks like. Um, let's imagine we're selling some single rings and then we're selling some uh, bundles of rings that you can buy together. Let's start with maybe this one. So we're gonna size this up. With rings, things might be a little bit different. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a new guide here or I guess I can move this guide down. And I want all the rings to fit pretty big in here because I want people to see it right when they go on and I don't want it to have to be too much of a zoom situation. Okay, then we're gonna get these exported. And this is a lot more cost efficient versus an in-studio shoot because you gotta have all the right lighting, mm -hmm. you have to have a studio. First of all, you have to have an all white, you know, seamless or whatever color you decided. So shooting in environment really gives you that flexibility as far as uh, creating some look to your e-com store. And of course, these are tips for lower budgets. It will not make you look super professional, but if done right, it will look very good, uh, but it is a great quick start for you guys. Other things to note as you work with this, you're gonna notice that it's on the hanger. So if you're working with shirts, this works out very well. Uh, it's pretty easy, it's a quick fix, but quick fixes do come with uh, their own caveats. And if you skipped ahead, then you should definitely hear this, but if you did not skip ahead, you'll remember that I said, you need to think about these things before you actually shoot, because imagine if you had a hoodie here and what that would look like, and then what happens if you do pants? So you're gonna think ahead, you have to think about what kind of hanger should I use, and then really how that all fits together. Am I gonna have to use a bunch of different hangers? Can I find three to four wooden hangers that actually fit the same aesthetic? And you, again, you have a little bit of leniency there when you get to it, but just think to think about before you actually move in and start doing these things. The last one is a quick tip for shooting. Uh, if you are shooting at home and you don't have flashes, you don't have lights, you can either shoot in the sun or if you're inside and you're shooting up against a wall or something, use a lower shutter speed. And what that allows you to do is let more light into the camera and then work it in post. And of course, it'll need to be on a tripod because lower shutter speed means that it takes more time to take in all that light. I've already set this up a little bit to shoot. And then what I want to do is make sure that I'm on a white balance. All right, so I just did a custom here. Now the ISO, I'm going to set down really low to like 100. But what I was talking about is the shutter speed here, which will be the same on almost any camera you use. If I bring it down, I can actually get to a higher exposure. Um, as you'll notice here, I'm at about plus 0.3. All right, so I'm gonna set it to the two second there. And then when you hit the button, it's actually gonna wait for two seconds and then take the photo. And that's gonna ensure that it's very still and then the photo is gonna come out looking the way you want it to look. Lastly, if you need help setting up your Shopify, uh, John X Santos is a friend of ours and he has a great playlist of videos on his channel that you can check out and he'll show you how to get that started from the ground up. From the ground up, baby. To show you guys an example, I have uh, Manners LV, which is based out of Las Vegas. A good friend of mine, Kenneth, owns the brand. So we're gonna go through his econ products and show you how that works for consistency. What I did was I just went through and shot these on a seamless and then we lit them up and I'm now going to clip them out and put them onto a white background to ensure that they're all the same exact white. Um, once that's done, I want to make sure that they are all about the same size and the angles look good, especially because when you look at it here in the uh, overview of all the products, I want them to look like all the shirts are the same size and the pants or whatever the case may be. The sweaters are about the same height. And uh, yeah, so this looks pretty good. And we're just gonna go ahead and get that exported out and make sure the file sizes are low. Cool. All right, that looks pretty good. 
All right, you guys, so that is our quick run through on elevating your e-com photography. If you want anything more on actually shooting the clothes themselves, let us know in the comments below and we can make a video for you. He's got some really exclusive tips up his sleeve just from working and shooting a bunch of product flat lays and things like that. So if you guys want to know about that, let us know so we don't waste our time making videos about things you don't care about. <laughs> you can also follow us on Instagram at Proper Worldwide. Link's going to be in the description and uh, go on there. Let's have our discussions. Let's uh, talk about things you like. Let's talk about inspo. Let's get Grammy, baby. Wow. Anyway, with just a click of a button in our description, you can find yourself today for the cost of $3.99 our Instagram at Proper World It's Five. totally free to follow us and we provide some really dope shit and resources. So why would it? Yeah, we probably have less than 100 followers right now. You could be an early adopter. You could be in there and be like, I followed them when they had less than 100 followers. Like witness this growth, you know? time. Ooh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and smash that motherfucking subscribe button. Turn on the post notifications if you're feeling fancy. And um, yeah, stay tuned for more videos.